Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is all about my pregnancy, labor delivery, and postpartum experience. I posted a little question box on my Instagram a few days ago and had you guys ask any questions that you had. So I thought I would sit down this morning, have my coffee, do my makeup with you guys, and just kind of have like a little like girl chit chat video. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to jump into it. If you guys don't already follow me on Instagram, because that is where I kind of post any of this um, like question boxes or polls or anything like that and my link is in the description for that but other than that I'm gonna jump into the video I hope you guys enjoy it and let's get started good morning guys I am fresh faced I have my cup of coffee and all of my questions that you guys submitted on Instagram but let's just jump in I'm gonna just do my makeup I'll try to tell you what I'm all using, but I'll link it all below if you guys are wondering. Um, I'm not a makeup artist or anything like that, but I just thought it'd be kind of fun to like do something while I answered these questions because otherwise it might get a little boring. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is put on some primer by Laura Mercier. It's the Pure Canvas Primer in Perfecting. I really like this stuff. Um, the first question is, do you and your husband share baby responsibilities 50-50 besides breastfeeding, obviously? Um, yeah, totally. I feel like I breastfeed Remy, and so that's obviously really time consuming, but if um, he's home, like he will like gladly change the diapers, play with her, hang out with her, just so I can have like 10 to like 15 minutes to like, go do some like self care or just like watch a show or something like that. Um, I also feel like even if he doesn't have the baby, he's really good about like going and running errands for us or something that used to be easy for me to do, but now maybe would be a little bit more challenging so even if he's not helping with the baby he's helping me like do something which I think is just as helpful as you know like taking care of the baby um, but yeah I say we have transitioned pretty well and we've kind of always like in our relationship I feel like everything is kind of 50 50 like he helps cook and clean and it's not really ever like 100% me doing something and vice versa so I feel like we've transitioned pretty well and he's been like the best dad which side note there is nothing cuter than seeing your husband become a dad I get emotional when I talk about it I just think I don't know just when you think you can't love someone more that happens and it's just like brings everything to the next level and it's just been like so cool to see all right, the next question, did you find any books or online classes helpful? I'm currently 23 weeks. Well, congratulations on the baby. 23 weeks is like the bitter, or like the best um, time. At least it was for me. I felt like I felt pretty good. My bump was starting to show, so it was like super cute and like fun to dress up. And I loved that period of my pregnancy. Um, but anyways, side note. Uh, did we we read or I didn't read any books. I'm not really a book reader, which I wish I was. But um, we watched one like course, and it was mostly on like sleep training because that was kind of what we mostly were concerned about. And it was by taking care of babies. I'll link it below. And I, it was super helpful. Um, I feel like we need to rewatch it. I feel like it's something you can watch like once your baby's here. If you're bored and you want to like learn something i don't think it's bad to watch it early we did and i feel like we have taken some things from it already but i feel like now that we had her and we've had her for like around two months it's probably when you really can like start implementing like sleep training things i feel like when they're any younger it's just like you're trying to survive and trying to like get a routine is kind of like comical honestly so i feel like now i'm at the point where i really could like re-watch that and learn a lot more so taking care of babies it's like the newborn class or something that's really all that we did um i don't know i kind of feel like maybe i should have watched more read more but you know you figure it out 
Okay, the next question is, how were the first few weeks after delivery? Any tips for navigating through those tough weeks? Um, yeah, I will say that they were tougher than I was expecting. Um, I think what I struggled with the most was just how much pain I was in personally. Like I remember it was one night at like 3 a.m. and I just like broke down in tears because all I wanted to do was like focus on Remy. Like I didn't wanna like have to worry about myself. I wanted just to feel good and like be able to like 100% give everything to her. But those first two weeks, I would say going into my third week is when I started feeling better. But I had a pretty bad tear when I delivered and I really just had to like rest and like take care of myself. The like first two weeks, I wasn't really even able to like get in and out of bed really easily or like pick her up. And I just like really had to depend on David. So if you can have your significant other or your mom or a friend or something come stay with you for those first two weeks, um, I definitely could not have done it on my own. Um, and maybe if you don't have like as bad of tear as I had, like things would go smoothly, but I know I definitely needed someone with me at all times just because I felt like I couldn't really care for Remy like completely on my own, which literally brought me to tears because it was so frustrating but you really do need to like have those weeks to like heal and um yeah so i would say just have help give yourself grace it will get easier um you're learning just as much as the baby's learning and it does get so much better i would say honestly week three is like when things started like um, I don't know getting easier and I felt better and I felt like we were like slowly getting the hang of things So just those first two weeks, you know, you'll be fine But just lean on the people that you have helping you All right, I'm gonna do some concealer. I use the NARS creamy concealer always and the next question is baby names Like were there any names that we liked that we didn't use and honestly baby names were a lot harder for me than I thought they were going to be um, but some names that we didn't use were, um, one that we both really liked was Scout. I thought that was just a cute name for a girl. I know it's kind of different, but I thought it was cute. Um, Teddy was my, like, second favorite. I love Teddy. I thought it was such a cute name for a little girl and I honestly still could use that so maybe I shouldn't be saying this but Teddy was definitely one of my favorites. Not necessarily David so we didn't go with it but loved that one. Poppy was on my list I think since I was in college. I loved Poppy so much. I thought like Poppy with our last name was super cute and I just really liked it. I've always thought Frankie was cute, um, Fanny was one that I saw on a list that I thought was super funny and cute, not funny, but cute, and then um, Effie, which I thought was really cute, but I feel like everybody would be like, what are you saying, or like question what her name was, and when I told my friends and family after she was born, like some of the names that we liked, literally everyone's response to the name Effie was exactly what I thought it would be. So um kind of glad we didn't go with that one, but I thought it was cute. Um, but yeah, I would say Teddy and Scout were my next like top names that I liked the most. Someone asked about my baby shower, kind of like the details of it. So Obviously, with everything going on, I couldn't have a normal baby shower, but um, we wanted to do something, and my mom hosted a drive-by shower at her house. It was the middle of winter in Minnesota. It was like in January, and it was freezing, but she set up like a fire pit, and we had... Um, like coffee and hot chocolate and um, just like my closest friends and family came and kind of people were just kind of driving by so it was never like too many people and everybody felt safe and um, for what it was it was like the perfect shower obviously not what I ever expected but isn't that how everything is these days um, but my mom and my 
family put together like the nicest shower so i was super thankful and just happy i was able to do anything so that's kind of what my shower was i didn't film anything because i just wanted to kind of be in the present but it was a really great day and i'm so glad that i did it all right i'm using a hula bronzer to bronze up my face and the next two questions are similar so i'm just going to answer them both together but it was how it was being pregnant and delivering during a pandemic and obviously not ideal it wasn't ideal for anybody and just like anyone else um i wish it were different but you kind of just had to deal with it and make the best out of it so i'll say the worst part was just like not being able to see people as often as I would have liked. Um, some of my best friends only saw me like once with a bump, which obviously would have been a lot different. Um, if the pandemic wasn't happening, I would have saw them a lot more, got to like do more things with them. Um, our baby moon, I would have definitely gone somewhere really cool. We just stayed around here, but like I said, that weekend was still such a fun weekend and one we'll never forget. So as lame as the pandemic made some things like my shower was different my baby moon it still was special to me and we made the best out of the situation so i will say that um delivering during a pandemic honestly i got a covid test when i got to the hospital and then like not being able to have family like come after she was born was really the only thing i mean i've never had a baby before so maybe it's way different but i didn't really feel like it was that different um and i will say i feel like even if i have more kids i'm not sure i would have other people come to the hospital after i delivered i just thought those like two to three days where it was just David, Remy and I in the hospital were so special and like those moments are something like we'll never forget and it was just like nice to be just our family and then when we got home like my parents and David's parents were able to come over and meet her so like they got to meet her within like the first week of her life and um, we still got those like first few days where it was really just us like taking in everything and it was just like a really special moment so i'm not even sure if i could have i would have wanted more people at the hospital so that's kind of what i have to say about that the next question is should i bring snacks to the hospital um a hundred percent um the food at my hospital wasn't that great david wasn't able to order food so only i could order food and i honestly wasn't that hungry the entire time like i just didn't really have a super good appetite so i would just order food and let him eat it but yeah the food wasn't great and you're there for three days straight so just having snacks to grab instead of always having to like order stuff was really nice i will say David brought beef jerky as one of his snacks and opened it up while I was having contractions and I threw up everywhere because of the smell. So, you know, just be smart with what kind of snacks you bring and, you know, if your wife maybe is sensitive to certain smells um, or anything like that, just, you know, maybe bring chips or like pretzels or something. <laughs> All right, the next question is my birth story. So I'm gonna give you the Spark Notes version just so we're not here forever. But I was 40 weeks and three days when I went into labor. So I was just a little bit over. Um, but I basically woke up in the middle of the night and was having contractions, which I didn't really know were contractions. Um, I mean, I should have assumed, but uh, they just kind of felt like period cramps and they weren't anything too intense. like. I didn't wake David up right away or anything. I just thought maybe I was like having like a stomach ache and whatever. So, so I had that for like an hour and then David woke up with me and started like timing everything. Basically called my hospital. They said to come in. My water broke at home, but it wasn't like the movies. It just like slowly trickled out of me. I showered I think three times before I went to the hospital because I felt so gross. I had to wear um, a towel in between my legs on the way to the hospital. This is very TMI, so sorry if any of my like guy friends or anything are watching this. Um, so then we got to the hospital, they checked me in, did a COVID test. I was negative, so I didn't have to wear a mask anymore, which I was kind of worried about. 
Um, David did have to wear one the whole time. I'm not really sure why they didn't just test him as well, but he had to wear one anytime like people came into the room, which it was fine. Um, so then I basically had contractions. Um, I got there at like 6 a.m. I think it was. I have like notes on my phone because I don't really remember everything. Um, so we got into the hospital at 4.30 and I was measuring at 2 centimeters and basically wasn't progressing super quickly so they started giving me Pitocin later in the afternoon and that was super intense and I wanted to wait as long as I could to get my epidural because my biggest fear was getting it too soon and then it wearing off um, during like you know the main part so I really tried to push it as far as I could and I got to I think um what time was it it was like 1 p.m and I was six centimeters dilated and I finally was like okay I need my epidural and that thing was heaven on earth I fell asleep I think within like one minute of getting it I was like passed out it does not hurt i mean in comparison to what you're going through so if you're worried about the pain don't it's not bad at all um and then around 6 30 i started pushing and i pushed for three and a half hours which is a really long time and nothing was happening um she like couldn't get past my pelvic bone which was really fun um and so then after three and a half hours my doctor was like okay i can tell you're getting tired the baby's getting tired like let's like think of some other options here so really sorry about this you guys i hope you really can't hear it too much but basically they said we could do a c-section or the vacuum and i really did not want to do the vacuum so i immediately was like let's do a c-section and i could kind of just tell with everybody in the room was like you don't want to do that just kind of like everything i had already done they were like i don't know they just didn't want to make me do that so we did the vacuum which basically just like is the thing that gets on the baby's head and when you push they pull and it just like helps you get the baby out and i tore really badly with it but um it did go really quickly and I kind of wish that we would have done it sooner. I feel like I pushed for so long, but yeah, baby was here. They laid it on me and it was like, I felt nothing else. It was just like the best moment and something you can't really describe, but I really, I feel like I just like held on to her while everything else was going on. And I was like, there's literally nothing else that matters. And so um yeah it was just an experience like no other and the best we spent the next two nights at the hospital which was super nice i wasn't in any rush to get home just like being at the hospital i felt like if we had any questions there were so many people there to like help us so we stayed there for two nights and then came home one thing i did forget about um she was sunny side up and they didn't realize it until after i was pushing for like three hours which i guess when they're sunny side up which means they're facing towards the ceiling their like faces um it can just be a lot harder to get them out and so they had to like go in and flip her which was super painful but obviously it needed to happen um but yeah just like a whole nother thing so that was you know not very fun all right the next question is what were you most nervous about beforehand that ended up not being as bad as you thought so there's a couple of things i was really nervous about and they were you know about as bad as i thought they were going to be but one thing i will say that i was really nervous about which seems silly but i'm a very private person so i was having like flash forwards of me like pushing and there being like 15 people in the room that i've never met in my life and just being extremely like vulnerable like everything's out and just i was like having extreme like nervousness about it i don't know why because like everyone says you do not care when you're in that room who's there what they see you're just like let's do this so if you're at all like me you're like a very private person and maybe a little bit nervous about that just don't be i know it's hard to picture you being that way because for me like i said i'm extremely private i hardly like change in front of my very best friends like i'm very shy in that way um so yeah i would say just like 
how open you are to just like letting it all out <laughs> um the next day after we i had the baby david and i were laughing because he's like could you imagine you doing what you're like when people would come in to help me nurse like you just have to like take off your shirt and your bra and you really are just like you can't care and he's like he knows how private i am so he was like i can't imagine you doing this like two days ago but now you're just like nothing nothing matters like um it was just pretty funny that you know the most private person you just you can't be when you're in that situation <laughs> someone asked if i had a natural birth or a c-section i had a natural birth um is Remy sleeping well at night? That was the hardest part for us. So that was one of the things we were most nervous about. Obviously we took that like sleeping class because of it. Um, but she's been so good. I think like since the very beginning, she basically, I guess her like routine right now, and it probably will change. I knock on wood every time I say this cause I feel like she's gonna like decide one day that this is not happening, but she will go to bed around like nine and then i will wake her up before we go to bed so that's usually around like 10 30 or 11 and give her like a dream feed is what they call it so she'll eat and then we'll all go to bed at the same time so then hopefully that first like chunk of sleep is like your longest and best so she'll go to bed then at like 11 with us and not wake up until like 4 30. <coughs> But um, she'll wake up at like 4.30 to eat again. And then she'll go back to bed until like 7.30 or 8, which is so nice. I, I don't know. I can handle that. I was expecting it to be so much worse. So many people like talk about how tired you're going to be. And I feel like it was just like in my head that I was going to be like so exhausted. Um, don't get me wrong. There's days that I feel like I could fall over. I'm so tired, but honestly, she's been a really good sleeper. So I feel very lucky. And like I said, knock on wood. How long was your labor and when did you start feeling contractions? So my labor was like 21 hours, I think. Um, my whole family was so worried because we text them at like 6 30 in the morning and then david like would do random check-ins but after i think it was like two o'clock he stopped doing check-ins because it just got like so intense in there and like i don't know i feel like your phone is your last thing on your mind and we didn't text our family until like 9 30 when she was born and my mom was freaking out his parents were and I don't know, it was pretty funny when they told the story after. They were like, we were all texting each other, like, have you heard anything? There's got to be something wrong. Like, what's going on? Um, but yeah, it was 21 hours, and my contractions started, I would say, at like 1 a.m. the night before. All right, the next question is, was labor and delivery scary? Um, I will say I was really scared beforehand. Like, I thought about it all the time, and I would just, like, randomly, it would be, like, a Saturday afternoon, and I'd be like, oh, my God, David, I'm so scared. Like, and he was like, why are you thinking about that right now? But it's just, like, I was really scared. Um, but I will say once you get to the hospital and you're, like, kind of in it and you're going through it, you get this, like, weird adrenaline, and you just kind of... I don't know you're in it so it's like you're not scared um so try to like not worry about it too much because once you're there you can do it that's like a pep talk i had to like tell myself i'm like billions and billions of people have done this like you can do it you're just as strong as them you got this like just give yourself some pep talks you'll be fine you're gonna do great and it'll be over before you know it um and then yes i did get an epidural don't be afraid for that either if you're thinking about getting one um to me a contraction was a lot more painful than that so you know i loved it the next question is what is one thing that surprised you one thing that surprised me was breastfeeding so i've never been the type of person that was like set on breastfeeding i wasn't really sure if i would like it and i just didn't really know if i wanted to do it but i knew i wanted to try it so um 
I tried it in the hospital and the first week was extremely painful. I almost like threw in the towel multiple times, but I just kept trying and now I love it. I feel like it is such a like beautiful like bonding time with my baby and I'm just very surprised at how much I like it because I you I have friends that I talked about about it. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to do it. I don't think I'll like it and I just never thought I would, but um, yeah, I've just been really enjoying it after that first week. I will say it's really painful and a lot of like trial and error that first like week or two. Um, I went to a lactation specialist and once my milk came in, everything was better. But that first like week, I will say is really challenging. So if you can get past that, um, I don't know it's very personal so you maybe won't like it but I was just surprised at how much I really did like it all right the next question is did my birth go as expected um I guess I didn't really have like a set thing in mind of like how it would go I wasn't someone with like a super strict like birth plan I didn't really like think about that honestly I knew I wanted an epidural and I knew David was gonna cut the umbilical cord like there was a few things that I knew that we wanted but other than that I just know it's really not up to me on how it goes or I don't know that's just how I thought of it so as far as like how it went is what I expected. Um, I kind of did expect to have problems or like struggle like having the baby just because my mom struggled with all three of us and she ended up having to have c-sections with all three of us so part of me in my back of my head was like I feel like I'm gonna end up having a c-section after like trying to have her vaginally for a while so in a way it kind of did go how I thought it was gonna go I obviously didn't have a c-section but um you know I almost did um so I will say yeah I guess in a way it did go how I expected but I definitely didn't have like a strict plan or anything that I was hoping that would happen sorry I just finished my brows I used the Anastasia dip brow pomade I really like this stuff and now I'm gonna do a little winged liner which I just started doing again so if you have a felt tipped liner that you love let me know this one was just like a tart one that i got i think in like a free package or something i didn't buy it so if you guys have a felt tip um liner that you like let me know because i need to buy one i'm going to set everything with the morphe continuous setting spray i'm not even sure like what this does but it just feels so good all right, Remy woke up, but I thought she could join us for the last question. Um, someone asked, what do you wish someone would have told you about postpartum and newborn? Um, so just because this is like top of mind and like kind of what I'm thinking about right now, um, I had no idea about uh, mamas going to see a physical therapist after delivering a baby. It makes total sense because your body goes through so much during that. Um, but I have been kind of starting to do a little bit of research on that. I've been contacting a friend that's a physical therapist and um, my doctor said that I could probably just do some like at home exercises to like work out those muscles and stuff. But because I did have such a bad tear when I delivered, um, my friend who's a th physical therapist is suggesting that I go in and actually see somebody. So I think I'm gonna be doing that and I will kind of vlog throughout that that whole process if I end up going and doing that just because I had no idea that it was a thing even though it does make a lot of sense hi so yeah that's just something I didn't know about and I just thought it was important to maybe talk about oh but yeah other than that I don't have much more to say on that just because I haven't um, actually gone to see the physical therapist or anything yet but um, yeah I think that is it for the video I hope that you guys enjoyed it um, I know I was doing my makeup through all this and I didn't really talk about all the products I used but if there's anything that you're wondering what I was using they'll all be in the description box and I hope that you enjoy this video and we will see you probably in the next vlog bye guys